Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I hope you're all doing very well. So I just watched the live action remake of Mulan. Let's talk about it. So the live action remake of Mulan is directed by Nikki Caro and this is yet another film that was unfortunately affected by the coronavirus pandemic and so it meant that this film could not have a theatrical release in the way that it was intended to and this is one of the biggest sticking points for me when it comes to this film because I think that is just so unfortunate considering how stunning this film is. Oh my god, I have so many thoughts <laughs> in regards to this film but first and foremost I want to preface this video by saying just how much Mulan means to me. Now listen, Disney's been going on this live action remake journey for a while now. They've, they've been doing this for a while, especially since Alice in Wonderland, or if you want to go even further back with 101 and 102 Dalmatians starring Glenn Close. <laughs> but they've been on a really long journey here. We finally reached Mulan, which is a film that has very, very high stakes for me because this is a film that I grew up with. When I say this film is my childhood, I mean this film is my childhood. I watched this film on repeat when I was younger. This and Disney's Hercules, those were my jam. And so when I saw that they were doing a live action remake, I I had to take a breath. I really just, I had to sit down. I was so nervous to see what they would be bringing us. And when I saw the trailer, even though I was unsure about the lack of music and the lack of Mushu, I at least could rest assured that these visuals of this film and the acting in this film would be on point. They were bringing the visuals, they were bringing the acting, they were bringing the warrior in Mulan. And that's one of the biggest benefits, the biggest boons that this film has is that the visuals are absolutely stunning. Are you kidding? Nikki Caro did everything that she could to make sure that those visuals brought the fantasy, the beauty of this Chinese mythology to life. And I think she did an excellent job doing so. I recently talked about <laughs> some not so stunning films <laughs> in the DCEU in my uh, DC fandom review where I discussed how I really dislike films that are desaturated with that ugly blue grey colour story. Here none of that. Absolutely none of that. And not only that but this film gives us a masterclass in how you present a more sincere and serious tone without sacrificing the colour, without sacrificing the beauty. And this is something that the DCEU <laughs> could really stand to learn because I think here we very much conveyed the power and the warrior within Mulan but without sacrificing the beauty of the overall story. I think it was absolutely phenomenal and I think it feels into that mythological aspect of this story as well. Now speaking of the myth, it was no secret that Disney really wanted to get this film right after the disaster of the original Mulan, at least from a Chinese perspective. The Chinese audiences really rejected the original Mulan, so much so that it only made about 1.8 million dollars just in total at the box office, which is horrendous for such a huge region that usually generates so much more money for Disney. So they really wanted to get this remake right which is why they sacrificed the songs and Mushu which Chinese audiences had rejected as being too westernized and so that's why they also adopted this more sincere and more powerful and serious tone in the film and I actually think that it works very well for this film. I think the cast sells it spectacularly. The actress portraying Mulan, I'll have her name up here, I don't want to butcher the pronunciation, she was phenomenal. She was Mulan, for sure, 100%. She adopted this character so, so well. And not only that, but I think she took it the extra mile because she was so serious and because she just seemed so naturally proficient in what she was doing. It took it the extra mile and created this character that was always gifted. And we'll talk about the gifts later on in this review. It's just that she'd had to repress those gifts in order to meet society's standards of what a woman should be. And apparently, this element of the character is much more faithful to the original Chinese folklore of Hua Mulan where she did have those gifts or as it's referred to here her chi, her chi was particularly powerful and strong and prevalent and that's what enabled her to have these incredible gifts and these incredible skills that she could utilize in war and that's quite different to the iteration of Mulan that we see in the animated version who is a bit more of a newcomer to all of these different skills like she's kind of learning on the job and she very much starts from zero 
when she is training at the boot camp. Now, like I just said, in keeping with the original folklore and creating more of a serious tone for this film, Niki Kara did decide to forfeit Mushu and some of the musical numbers, although there is a bit of an ode to them in the score of the film itself. I was kind of sad to see Mushu go, especially when I heard the news initially, I was like, God, this is not Mulan without Mushu. There is no Mulan without Mushu. But having seen the film overall and seeing this more serious tone, I do think he wouldn't have really worked with what they were going for this time around. And so I didn't quite miss him as much as I thought I would. However, they did try to replace sort of the character of Mushu with the overall motif of this beautifully, stunningly animated film phoenix now i have some mixed thoughts about this first of all it's beautiful it's stunning so i did think it added a nice flourish <laughs> to these sequences where it just appeared out of nowhere and guided her on her journey like that was really nice but on the other hand i do think that there was maybe one maybe two extra appearances that did not need to be there in the film i think if we just had two less appearances from the phoenix it would have been the perfect amount to really convey that message that her ancestors are guiding her through this journey but to go against my own point I would say that the end sequence where she's fighting and the phoenix kind of appears behind her in this very artistic beautiful way it was very reminiscent of the last season of Game of Thrones where Daenerys is like walking out to meet her people after she's ravaged King's Landing and one of her dragons is behind her just kind of creating that whole like dragon queen aesthetic and there was a very similar use of symbolism in this film as well so I did think it was a cool shot in Game of Thrones and to be fair I will have to say it was a cool shot here now as I mentioned before another motif that we have very present here in this iteration of this story is the chi, the chi that Mulan has within her and that plays directly into the gender roles that are explored in this society and how that's forced Mulan to repress her chi and to repress the gifts that she naturally has. I think there was a brilliant juxtaposition created here between how the male characters were able to celebrate their chi and really show it off and use it to their advantage in battle. We saw this demonstrated perfectly with Donnie Yen's character who was just absolutely phenomenal his performance in this film wow stunning like the way that he was able to really highlight the gifts that he had the, the exceptionalism that he had it really made him stand apart from everyone else that was celebrated because he was a male character whereas in the case of Mulan you know when Donnie Yen's character finds out that she has those gifts he very much encourages her to bring them out to show them off to really use them to their advantage except he thinks that she's a man which is the only reason why it was encouraged then but as soon as he finds out that she's a woman all of a sudden there's all these rules about expulsion and beheadings and all sorts because she is not allowed to take on this position of a warrior and so all of a sudden her gifts don't mean anything because she can't actually use them because they're not deemed appropriate for women in this society and that's something that is very much hammered home <laughs> in this film like they really push that point forward and I actually think it's very important I actually like the way that this film really propelled that point because first of all this film is directed towards younger kids so you do kind of have to belabor that point in order to get it through to their minds although I will say this film was quite universal like it didn't feel like a children's film it felt like something that everyone could enjoy which I very much appreciated but as a second point the fact that they did emphasize the gender roles in this society and the consequences death we're talking consequences of Mulan's actions it really helped raise the stakes and it really did help create a bit more tension surrounding her secret. Closely related to the idea of Mulan's chi and her natural abilities and gifts was of course her relationship with her father which is again very much highlighted very similarly to the original animated version but here it's done particularly well because we do get to see Mulan's childhood and the way that he trained her and enabled her to use her gifts when she was younger as opposed to as she grew up and all of a sudden she had to take on the role of a woman and someone who needed to find a husband in order to bring honor to her family and we see a perfect parallel between the perception of Mulan and her talents with that of the new character the witch. This witch is someone that is present in I think the folklore surrounding Mulan you know traditionally I'm not sure specifically where she shows up but she was definitely absent from the original animated version of this film so I was quite skeptical about her inclusion this time around especially because they said they wanted a bit more of a serious tone so I was thinking you know how is this going to fit in with the more serious tone that they're going for but it does 
it does fit in it 100 percent fits it i shouldn't have doubted nikki Kara. what was i thinking she knew exactly what she was doing because creating this parallel is so interesting and in fact i could have used more of the witch i could have used a little bit more of mulan's interaction with the witch because i think that was very brief because the witch kind of comes along near the end of the film and tells mulan to be honest with herself and mulan's like no i'm a man and then she ends up almost dying only to realize that she really did need to be true to herself and those are kind of the morals that were instilled within her by her father and of course by the regiment led by donnie yen and when she sees that she's been so dishonest and she can't really look at herself in the mirror and see herself being true then she realizes that she has to tell the secret she has to reveal the fact that she is a woman and mulan's self-reflection during this part of the film is very much fast-tracked by the witch but when i say fast-tracked i mean fast-tracked <laughs> they race <laughs> through that element of the film quite quickly and I think it's kind of disappointing because the relationship there is so interesting the idea that the witch represents the worst possible outcome for Mulan someone like her who has these gifts and this power someone who grew up just like her but instead of being repressed instead of being forced to you know hide away those powers and those gifts that she has she showed them off but then her village betrayed her and her village rejected her and she ended up going down this darker path and I I think this adds a bit more complexity to the villain overall because the villain himself is quite dull and he was in the original animated film anyways so I'm not too surprised or offended by that but I do like this added element of this witch because she creates this really cool parallel with Mulan and another comparison that I wanted to touch on when it comes to the story points of this version of the film versus the animated version is Shang. Let's talk about Shang. <laughs> Listen, first of all, I just want to make it clear that I am 100%, 100% Team Shang and Mulan. I love the two characters together. I think they were an amazing Disney couple, one of the best, one of the best Disney animated couples. If you look at all of those Disney princesses and their dumb two-dimensional princes, like Shang really stands out, even though he's not technically a prince, he really stands out in the, the archive of Disney's couples. However, I do think it was a wise decision on Nikki Caro's part to not have an equivalent character in this version of the film because there is a little bit of an icky power dynamic situation at play here like I understand in 2020 that just wouldn't fly and I think people would have a lot of criticism with the idea that you know Mulan would fall in love with her superior like again the power dynamics are a little bit weird there so I get it I completely understand but I don't want to take away anything from the original shines <laughs> relationship with Mulan because I think it was portrayed beautifully there and I think it's a very fine line to walk on and I think they did a great job in the animated version but I also completely understand them evading that whole situation in this live action one so this time around Shang's character is split into two distinct characters in Commander Young and the fellow recruit that joins Mulan called Chen now I think Chen as a replacement was great I think he very much had that charm he very much had that likability and in the sequel because there hundred percent should be a sequel Equal, I'd love to see their relationship bloom and blossom because I very much feel like they had some great chemistry there and I approve I approve of this change however I will say I'm also happy that this film doesn't really focus on the romantic aspect of their relationship this time around it's very much about their friendship and their camaraderie and his respect for her and her skill and come to think of it if I was going to compare the animated version of Mulan to this one I will say that this one does a better job of honing in the idea that Mulan is a warrior first and everything else second. It isn't really about Mulan defying all gender roles and undermining them as opposed to her becoming really in tune with who she really is and being able to live the life that she's supposed to given her talent. And boy is she talented because the action sequences here really made a point to highlight Mulan's movements, to highlight her skill. I will say that if I did have a little bit of a critique it would be that some of the action sequences look a little bit rocky because of the CG and a little less believable than others especially the avalanche sequence that wasn't my favorite i understood why it needed to be there because of course it's paying homage to the original avalanche sequence in the animated version but it didn't always look the best i could have done without it if i'm being honest and also the film failed to really convey the power 
of the other side's army. Um, I never really felt like they were much of a threat because you always saw like <laughs> like 10 of them. <laughs> like you saw a bunch of warriors. They felt more like a gang as opposed to a rival army. So in the case of the Imperial Army as well, I just didn't feel like there was the scale that I really needed in order to, you know, get that sense that this was a, a huge threat to the Imperial Army. So overall, I have to admit, I am pleasantly surprised with how great this film turned out to be. I know that this is a pretty unpopular opinion because I guess people are crapping all over this film for some reason. Listen, I've read some of those online reviews and they're by people who haven't even seen the film yet which drives me insane but unfortunately it seems as though these live action remakes that Disney has just been projectile vomiting all over us <laughs> have left a bad taste in some people's mouths oh gross <laughs> the point still stands that some people are just over the live action remakes in general which doesn't bode well for the future of Disney's live action remake slate because there are a ton more coming and as long as these films continue to make money put an asterisk next to that for Mulan then we will continue to get them because Disney is all about this at the end of the day. But in terms of my enjoyment of this film, I had a really great time with this one and I was so relieved. <laughs> I was so relieved. And as a result, I'm going to be giving the live action remake of Mulan an 8 out of 10. Before I leave, I did want to touch on the tiny issue of the box office for this film being non-existent because unfortunately the only way we were able to view this film was via Disney+. Plus. This is so, so sad, like I said before, because I think this film is visually spectacular and I think it very much would have benefited from a theatrical release, 100%. If Disney ever makes this film available in the cinemas, I 100% will be the front of that queue because I definitely think it would benefit from that cinematic experience. As it stands with this $29.99 or £19.99 price tag, do I think that's worth it? Mm, that's for you to decide it depends on how much of a fan you are of Mulan and it also depends on how many times you think you're going to see this film because it will be made available for everyone who has Disney Plus uh, for free for no extra cost on December 4th I believe and the paid version will only be available up until I believe the 6th of November or sometime around that you can definitely check out the details on the Disney Plus website they have a whole explanation of the situation which I appreciated but you can watch the film several times if you've purchased it on Disney Plus but it will be available to everyone who has Disney Plus in December so if you can wait and you can watch it during the Christmas holidays then you might not have to shell out all of that coin. So that's it from me now that I told you guys my thoughts on Mulan it's time for you guys to let me know what you thought of the film down in the comments below please be sure to subscribe to catch new videos coming up thank you guys so so much for watching I really really appreciate it and I will see you in the next one bye